Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We are so glad to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. It is such an honor to get to teach this word and to hear it, isn't it? Amen. I've been talking out of my book that I, I wrote back in 2018, and it's called The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. It comes out of an experience when Jesus came into my hotel room when I was in St. Petersburg, Russia, and he talked to me about this era and what it's going to take for us to walk skillfully in this last day era yes. to have a full measure of the anointing, the, of that which is upon us uh, to minister that effectively, especially, or let me say specifically, he was, he was speaking about ministers, but generally the truths he brought to me that night would apply to every single one of us because we all have an anointing that abides within. Amen. So <clears throat> I don't want you to be tripped up by the title double portion anointing mm -hmm. because not everyone um, will walk under double portion anointing, but we can all walk skillfully. Yes. Um, to where the anointing that abides within can flow at full measure unhindered. Yes. Amen. Amen. That anointing that abides within each and every believer, it does not increase, but our skill at drawing on it can increase. Yes. Yes. Our skill at letting it uh, have its way in our daily life can increase. Amen. Yes. So these things that we're ministering on, although there is specific help to ministers, they are a help to every single person in the body of Christ. So we invite you to go back and watch previous episodes. This, this is not a standalone, so to speak, yeah. uh, episode. Right. We want you to hear the whole of what's being said. And you say, well, Pastor Nancy, how many episodes are there? Uh, there's going to be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is there's going to be a lot. Amen. So Amen. that, that Amen. means we're, we're hooking you in, Amen. you know, yes. um, the power of God is the anointing of God. The yes. anointing of God is the power of God. Yes. And John told us, he said, there, the anointing abides within you, meaning it's never going to leave you. Yes. And that power then is available to you no matter what your need, no matter what That's the right. situation, yes. no matter what the circumstance. Right. Now we need to be skillful yes. at right. yielding to and drawing on yes. that anointing that abides within. Yes. Because when we do power flows Amen. in our situation. Amen. And um, there's never, it, there's no need struggling when we could just turn on power. Right. Amen. Amen. And so uh, the greater our skill level, the greater that power can flow. That's right. Amen. Amen. We don't want to hinder that flow of power. No, we right. want to cooperate with it. God's the operator of it, but we are the co-operator. So we have a role to play is what I mean to say. Um, <clears throat> we've been camping on the first part of what Jesus said to me that night in St. Petersburg, Russia. When he came into my hotel room, you say, did you see him physically? I did not see him physically. I knew by word of knowledge where he was and what he was saying to me. So I became his secretary that night mm -hmm. and the instruction no doubt helps me, but it's also for the body of Christ. Yes. And so that's why I wanted to take some time and minister on it. Uh, he started out by saying this, to walk accurately and in the fullness of this era and season, do not misspeak under the anointing. Now, that's a phrase that is specific, especially to ministers for when that anointing comes up on a minister. Now, every believer won't have it come up on them the way a minister will. And the anointing that comes upon is not for the minister himself. It's for him to minister to the needs yes. of the people. Yes. 
every minister has to, in their daily life, rely on that anointing that abides within, just like every other believer does. But when Jesus said, do not misspeak under the anointing, he's saying when that anointing is upon you, it's dangerous to use it for a different purpose other than what God wants it used for. We can't turn it and make it something to benefit us Uh in the sense of if somebody were to have an opinion they're trying to further or to have a business they're trying to further. You you don't use the anointing of God for that. You use it for his purpose and that is to meet the needs of the people. But when it says, do not misspeak under the anointing, every one of us have an anointing that abides within. Mm -hmm. So let's not misspeak. Let's not misspeak. And then Jesus went on and said, bring great consecration to the tongue and speech. And then he said how to do that. Not speaking lightly, inappropriately, or with exaggeration. Now in previous episodes, we've talked about that. So you'll have to go back and watch the teaching on that. And we're, we've been talking about this. Only truth can be in your mouth. For God and his power only flow through, to, through truth. Jesus said to me that night, he said, I only said what I heard my father say. I only did what I saw my father do. So what's he saying? Only truth governed me. Right. Every conversation I had, it measured up to truth. Amen. Yes. It demonstrated Amen. truth. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then he went on and he said this. He said, you have the help you need for this task with the tongue through the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now notice, it's a task yes. uh, to learn to use the tongue rightly and not yes. let it just say anything it wants. Right. Can I tell you this? The flesh wants to tell it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yes. The flesh wants yes. to say That's things. Right. Yeah. And it takes, it takes uh, practice and it takes, yes. you know, it takes uh, a spiritual skill to say, you know what, I'm not going that way. Mm-hmm. I'm not just going to say something if it ought not be said. Mm-hmm. And so Jesus said, you have help you need for this task with the tongue mm-hmm. through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will help you. Mm-hmm. Choose to have a guard set over your mouth to have the tongue tamed by the power the power, help, and reliance upon the Holy Spirit. No man on his own can tame the tongue. It requires the divine help of the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad you're not left to yourself to do that? We have divine help. Therefore, if we have divine help, we have no excuse. Amen. Um, We cannot control and dominate our tongue just with willpower. Amen. Amen. But Jesus said to me that night, we, we must choose to have a guard set over our mouth. Yes. That's good. We, what's that mean? We must choose to yield to the Spirit. Yeah, yes. right. When the Holy Spirit checks us yes. and we don't yield to it, we're not choosing to have the guard yes. set over our mouth. Yeah, Haven't you ever had times when you're in the midst of a conversation on the inside, you go, oh, mm-hmm. I yes. better not go there. Right. Or, oh, I shouldn't have gone there. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're learning. We can choose to yield to the spirit or we can choose not to yield to him. If we choose not to yield to him, we're laying down our guard because he will help us guard how we use our tongue. And we cannot have the full flow of the, the, the anointing that abides within blessing our life when we're choosing against how the spirit is leading us. I'm talking about with our speech. Amen. Amen. What about this? We know how the word leads us. If we know the word says something not to do it, we don't need to have God to give us an additional leading. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. Sometimes he'll give us an additional leading, but uh, we growing up means I don't wait for an additional leading when I know what the word says. Amen. Amen. We yield to him, to the Holy Spirit that will check us as that guard. Don't, don't, don't say that, right? Um, we yield to him by responding to that leading, yes. not stepping over it and acting like we didn't notice it. Amen. Amen. I want to read to you Psalm chapter 141, verse 3. This is the Amplified Classic Translation. It reads, set a guard, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep watch at the door of my lips. Mm -hmm. Well, the Word and the Holy Spirit guard 
and help us yes. keep watch over our mouth. They will direct us in our speaking. Yes. The word will direct us. The spirit will direct us. Yes. But we must give place to and listen to them and not ignore them. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. James chapter three and verse eight says, but the tongue can no man tame. Right. So don't think that you're going to be able to do this alone. That's right. Right. We need to draw on divine help. Yes. Amen. Amen. Like I said, because the tongue wants to tell it. The natural man wants to tell it. It can't wait to find a listening ear or sometimes. That's a bad habit. That is a bad mental habit. Amen. Amen. Now, I do want you to turn with me to Romans chapter 8 and verse 13. We're going to see a phrase that we find in the King James. Romans 8 verse 13, midway through that, that verse, it says, you through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body. Well, how many of you know your mouth is in your body? Your tongue is in your body, right? Um, So it says you through the spirit. Well, is it me or is it the spirit? It's both. You through the spirit, or if I could say this, you yielding to the spirit. Because he'll direct you and guide you. And don't, don't say that. Don't go that direction. Uh, but you yielding to the spirit who's endeavoring to lead you, you'll mortify the deeds of the body. What's the word mortify? It's a, it's a word connected with death. You put to death the deeds of the body. Amen. Amen. That's what we want to do. Yes. That they're not rising up and living our life for That's us. Right. Right. We're saying, oh no, you're not, yes. you're not taking my life off Amen. course. Yeah. Amen. 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 The Amplified Classic of that passage says this, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death, making extinct, extinct deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body. Mm-hmm. So notice this, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you don't try to do it. Just you right. oh. yes. That's good. So good. through the power of the Holy Spirit. Then you, yes. you can succeed at this, yes. but if we set aside his leading, right. set aside those, um, if I could say those dealings of the spirit, step over them, then we're on our own. Yes. And we know where we arrive when we're on our own because we've been there before. We don't want to go there anymore. Amen. 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 So through the spirit, we're able to habitually put to death. Notice we have to make it a habit to respond to the spirit, a habit to listen to him every time, not just every once in a while, not just on Sundays, not just when we're going to church or in church, but it's our, it's our daily lifestyle. We have a habit of following the leading of the spirit. We're yielding to him. Um, So through the spirit, you say, what does it mean through the spirit? Well, we could say this and be correct. Praying in the spirit. That's one flow of through the spirit. So as we take time to pray in the spirit or pray in other tongues, speak in other tongues, we are employing the help of the spirit to bring that tongue under control. Now, You say, how does praying in the spirit, speaking in tongues, help me with my tongue? Because as you pray in the spirit, speaking in other tongues, you're building up your spirit man. You're building up your spirit man. And as your spirit man is stronger, so to speak, than your tongue, than your flesh, Mm -hmm. then your tongue and your flesh yield to your spirit. So by praying in the spirit, You are connecting divine utterances to your spirit and your spirit is edified, built up. Uh Amen. Amen. Uh, The word tells us that as we speak in tongues, we edify ourselves. That word edify means built up. When does somebody's tongue take the lead and dominate their life instead of their spirit when their spirit's not built up? When the tongue is built up instead of the spirit built up. The built up spirit needs to dominate the tongue and direct the tongue. Praying in other tongues, speaking in other tongues, you're edified. Your spirit man is edified and therefore the body is kept under. Because it's just like, um, it's just like, let's say this, uh, some kids, they grow up together in a neighborhood 
and one of them is small for a long time. And the older ones and the bigger ones in the neighbor neighborhood keep taking advantage of him because he's smaller. But one day this one goes off to college and he comes back four years later and he's not the same size anymore. <laughs> And they try to still work that same thing against him. And he's got him some muscles now. He's got him some growth now. He's got him some strength now. Yeah. And he's able to put them down and keep them down to where they don't take advantage of him anymore. That's a picture of your spirit when it's edified by praying in other tongues. Yes. That your, your tongue might have pushed your life around and yes. got into all kinds of trouble before. Yes. But when you go aside and you take time to pray in the spirit, you come out different than what you went in. Amen. And you come back and you're built up and you're fortified. Now you're pushing that tongue around instead of that tongue leading your life. Amen. And I, when I'm talking about you, I'm talking about the real you, the spirit you, the inward man, the new man. Amen. So as we take time to pray in the spirit, our, our spirit is strengthened to rise up and dominate instead of our tongue dominating us and running loose in our mouth. Amen. Uh, one of the best illustrations of this would, would be um, in connection with my husband years ago. Um, there was a man on the job. My husband, before he got saved, was a construction worker. And on the job, there was a man who was always inviting all the time. Every week, he would invite my husband to church. And my husband, of course, wasn't born again at the time, and he wasn't interested in going to church with him. And um, he would not just decline him, he would colorfully <laughs> decline him. He, he would give an enlarged vocabulary. <laughs> he didn't just say no. He gave many words around that <laughs> word no. And so um, every time this man asked him to come to church, this is the kind of response he got out of my husband. Well, one day my husband made, uh, the, the right decision and, and changed his answer and said, yes. And that's the day he went and got born again. And from then on, he took off running for yeah. God, uh, and, and was never the same just because this one man wouldn't give up on him yeah. for a year and a half. He asked him every week. Now, after my husband got born again, my husband asked this man, he said, is there anything wrong with you physically? And he said, no, why do you ask? And he said, well, I noticed that whenever you would invite me to church and I would decline you, you always would end up going off to the restroom. And he said, I just thought there was something wrong with you physically. And he said, I used to go in there. Now, see, now my husband's saved. So he's talking to him this way. He said, after you would decline me and you were so colorful and how you declined me, he said, my flesh wanted to just take you down to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, after you would decline me, I would go in to that restroom and I'd just stand there and pray in tongues. Wow. What, what was he doing? He was putting his flesh yes. back down so he wouldn't go out and beat my husband up. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I appreciate that, you know. So what, what did he recognize? He recognized that just by going aside a few moments and praying in his spirit, yes. yeah. that his inner man got strengthened. Yes. Yeah. And when your inner man gets strengthened and you act on that inner man, then the outer man loses proficiency. Yes. The yes. outer man loses strength yes. in the sense of it now has to yield to the strength of the inner man. Yes. Yes. He recognized that. And so no matter if you say, I just struggle, I struggle with this habit. I struggle with this addiction. I know I'm born again. I know Jesus lives in me, but I just keep tripping up over this, over this one area in my life or several areas in my life. Then if you'll take time to pray in other tongues, you'll quit tripping at the same place. Yes. You'll be fortified to say no to that situation. You'll be fortified to say no to that habit because sin does not have to have dominion over right. you. In fact, sin doesn't have dominion over you, but as long as you're going to keep your spirit weak and keep it in the, the, the less than position, praying in other tongues will cause you to 
come into a strength that will leave your, lead your life into the highest flow. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. So that means we have divine help. Yes. We have divine help with our tongue, with our thought life, with yeah. our behavior, with our attitudes. Yeah. We have divine yeah. help. Amen. Amen. You can go aside and pray in the spirit and build up that inner man. Amen. 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 Um, now I want to go a little further in something that Jesus said further this night in uh, St. Petersburg, Russia in 2018. He said this to me. He said, slowness to make changes that I deal with you about is unacceptable. Meaning he doesn't accept that. Yeah. Well, God, I intend to change that, but you got to give me time. He doesn't accept that. Wow. Just because we said that doesn't mean he accepted what right. we said. Right. Yes. Yeah. I intend to make changes. I'm going to, but if you'll give me time to change this. Well, he's saying slowness to make changes I deal with you about is unacceptable. Wow. There is to be prompt obedience to my correction direction and instruction. Listen, correction, direction, and instruction is God being good to us. If we're doing something wrong, we want to know about it because if we're doing something wrong, that's a place of entrance for the enemy. And when God spotlights what's wrong, it's not because he's picking on us. It's because he's fortifying us. He's, he's pointing out a place where the enemy could take advantage of us. Yes. And there's no need for him to take advantage of us. Amen. 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 So he will point out to us corrections we need to make. Be grateful for that. Amen. That's the goodness of God. Amen. The direction he may give you, uh, he'll direct you to do something. That's the goodness of God. Yes. Do it. The instruction he may give you, that's him being good to us. And then he, Jesus went on and said, the slowness of change is a bad habit of the flesh. Mm-hmm. It's a bad habit of the flesh. Um, you know, this as a parent, when you have children, you can train them to, that you have to say it a bunch of times before they have to do it. Mm-hmm. Meaning you can say, go clean your room. And they just sit there and act like they didn't hear you. (laughs) And you say, go clean your room, go clean your room, go clean your room. If you keep doing that, then you're training them that they, they don't have to move until a certain number of times you've said it. Well, see, if we're not careful, we'll do, we'll treat God that way. We don't want to be immature like children who do that that they, they're waiting to be told over and over and over before they think the parent means it. Right. God doesn't have to say it 10 times before he means no. it, yeah. right? Yes. We, don't want it, we don't want him to, we don't want to approach him like he doesn't mean it until we've heard him say it multiple right. times. And so uh, this is part of yielding to that anointing that abides within is learn to respond to him immediately. When that anointing starts moving, when that anointing, the, the, the Holy Ghost in us speaks to us to do something, learn to respond That's immediately. Good. I love something that some Bible school students asked of Smith Wigglesworth one day. They said to him, because he was a man of the word, he was a man of the spirit, so skillful in the things of the spirit. And they asked him, how did you become so skillful with the word and the spirit? He said, the moment I perceived a dealing of God, the moment I perceived the spirit leading me to do something, I immediately acted on it. You see, that's skill. Amen. So this is what Jesus said. The slowness of change is a bad habit. We don't want to have the bad habit of, 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 um, taking too long to make changes, taking too long to make changes. And he said, slowness of change is a bad habit of the flesh. So if we're not making changes that he's dealing with us about, what do we know? The flesh is dominating us. His word is not dominating us. His spirit's not dominating us. Our flesh is dominating us. And that's always dangerous. And he said that slowness of change is a bad habit of the flesh. But listen to this. It can be broken through the power of the Spirit. Well, how does it get broken? Well, what what did we just read? That you can take time to speak in other tongues and build that spirit man up. And when that, that, that spirit man, that inward man is built up and he's fortified and he's strengthened, then he will quickly grab hold of things that need to make change, that he needs to change or implement. Yes. 
and it, and it will come to pass. Then Jesus went on and said, walking in the spirit is a requirement and a must for that change to take place. For what change to take place? Uh, to, to, um, to yield to the spirit instead of yielding to the flesh. Yeah. To put down that bad habit of not making corrections in, timely, in a timely manner. Yeah. Amen. Uh, then go with me, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 3. And this is the Amplified Classic Translation. It reads this way. But if one loves God truly with affectionate reverence, prompt obedience and grateful recognition of his blessings... He is known by God, recognized as worthy of his intimacy and love, and he is owned by him. Look at this first phrase. But if one loves God truly with affectionate reverence, prompt obedience. Look at this. This is one way we love God, prompt obedience. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. So what do we know? God measures love not by feelings, but by obedience. Yes. That our love for him can grow as our obedience to him grows. Yes, yes. Yes. Good. Amen. Amen. So here the Amplified says that prompt obedience is a flow yeah. of an expression of our love for him. Mm -hmm. So if we're not obeying him promptly, we just know this, we can grow in that love. Yeah. Yeah. And when we're growing in love, how do we know that our love for God is growing? Because we're obeying him more promptly. Yes. Amen. Amen. So one way we demonstrate our love to God is show him through what we do. Yes. Listen to this. Just words of affection are no substitute for acts of obedience. We can't just disobey him and disobey him and disobey him and say, but I love you. Right. Right? Yeah. Uh, he's saying love is something you do. It's not yes. just simply something you say. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, we're learning. Yes. I said we're learning. Yes. And we're coming up. Yes. I said we're coming up. We've been teaching out of my book, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. We want you to get hold of your copy. You can go to our website at JesusTheHealer.org and you can purchase your copy today and we'll get it right out to you. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this book, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing, Nancy Dufresne gives clarity on how we are to walk successfully in this era. It instructs those in the ministry, but also brings instruction to every believer in helping them to fulfill the will of God for their lives. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Jesus the Healer Crusade in Fresno, California at Elite Event Venue, located at 4105 West Fig Garden Drive, Fresno, California, 93722. The dates are March 25th through the 29th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting miracles. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DeframeMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Defrain Ministries for making this production possible.